Hey guys, I am Game Advisor, and welcome back to another Icarus Tips video. If you want to check out some of our other videos, do feel free to click them at the end of this one. We've got lots of tips that'll help you out no matter where you are at in your gameplay. With that being said, let's get started. First up is that you can take out all exotics with you as long as they're equipped or in your hotbar. A lot of people actually don't realize this, but when you go into a game and bring in your exotics, you may notice that the drop pod can only hold 5 slots, whereas when you drop in, you can bring up to 10 items. Well, if you want to bring those items out with you, you can take up to 5 items out with you that are just equipped onto your character, such as modules or armor or your suit, and you can take out items on your hotbar. In total, you can have 5 items plus your suit on your hotbar or equipped to you that you want to take out with you. Everything else will have to be inserted into the drop pod, otherwise it won't fit within those 10 slots. So if you want, you can take out all 10 of the items you brought in every single time. Second is that sprains now happen in this game. If you didn't know already, there was a mechanic that would cause you to break your leg if you fell from too far, but now there's a new mechanic called sprains. Anytime you fall and it's a little bit shorter of a fall, instead of just breaking your leg or not having any negative effect now, now you can get sprains. These aren't too big of a deal. They cause a minor debuff that slows you and reduces carry weight, but other than that, it's only about 60 seconds, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. It's just something to take note of, and do remember this can stack, so be careful with it. I did once have two at the same time and that was significantly worse than just having a regular sprain. Coming in at number three today is that prospects now show why they are difficult. So if you didn't see this in the update, which I'm sure you have if you've played in the last few days, there's a new sort of mission variety. You have hardcore missions, you have little skulls next to them which indicate their difficulty. Well, if you actually click on the mission, it will explain to you why that mission is difficult and why it's set at that difficulty setting. You can see on the right side some percentages, like some mob increase health, or some other benefits you might get like XP gain, or that maybe you can only revive once. I know that's a hardcore thing, but there's just a lot more information in general about why the mission might be challenging versus beforehand. Fourth is that you can spam M to see map. Now, let me clarify what I mean here. Yes, if you just hit the M button, it'll pull up your map. But if you need to figure out how to get somewhere and it's a long distance or something like that, and you don't know which path to take, or if you're going down the right little like carved out mountain or something like that, you can actually spam the M button in order to see your map. You could also just use the cave map, but this is something just worth noting. If you don't want to use the cave map, you can spam M rapidly and you'll be able to kind of see a very short blip of the map as it's loading in. This is a bug we think, so do remember this one will probably change it in the future. Alrighty, we are halfway there now with number five, which is you always spawn near your original drop pod if you don't have a spawn point. So if you didn't know this already, when you hit the respawn button after you die, instead of spawning in a sleeping bag if you don't have one down, you'll spawn in a drop pod that drops back onto the planet. That drop pod will always seem to spawn within at least a kilometer of your original drop point. It doesn't seem to drop you right on top of it or anywhere consistently, but it will drop you in that sort of general vicinity or that same square on your map roughly. The reason this is important is because if you made a long distance run and you don't mind offing yourself to get back quickly, you can just let a wolf eat you in order to respawn back at your drop pod and then just complete a mission without having to do the walk back. Sixth on our list is that flame arrows can actually be used as pretty decent torches. Now, yes, you could do the whole turn down your shadows trick, but if you're anything like me, you don't like doing that because it feels kind of cheesy or cheeky. So what I like to do is actually use flame arrows as my source of light over making myself a torch. Yes, you can still make them if you want. There's nothing wrong with them. Torches are still a little bit better as far as their light production, but flame arrows in particular are extremely useful because they're also your weapon and you can have your weapon ready to go in case you get into a fight. Seventh is that in order to beat storms, sometimes all you really need to do is just go into the next biome over. So if you happen to be, say, near the snow biome and you're in the forest biome, or in the desert biome and you're in the forest biome, or whatever combination you want to find, all you have to do is simply walk into that other biome, and if there's no storm going on over there, then you boom, the storm won't be affecting you. And when the storm goes away, you can come back into the biome you were originally in. This is just a way mostly to get rid of the debuff that you you get where that little bar goes up saying that you're being exposed to weather, but at the end of the day, it's just a nice little tidbit that might save you some damage, or at the very least, might get rid of that debuff for you. 
Eighth is that exotic ore can be found on a wide range of missions, not only on extraction missions. So you don't have to go spam deep vein extraction, although currently that is the fastest way to get exotics. It is not necessarily the only way to get them. If you didn't know, exotics will spawn all around the map on every map that you play on. I do think this depends on missions. So for an example, let's say you're doing a kill commission where you have to go kill a wolf or something like that, and you go check out a cave nearby, there might might be an exotic in that cave. That's where I found the vast majority of mine. However, there could be some just laid out anywhere. So just keep your eyes peeled for them. It might be worth at least checking each cave on your way. I usually find it in about one to 10 or one to 20 caves. I can find one exotic ore node. So again, just something that you might wanna consider when you're traveling if you need exotics. Ninth on the list is going to be that you can hide inside a carved out rock for shelter during a storm if you're in a pinch. So if you can't move over to another biome or that biome also has a storm going on and you're not near a base or a cave where you can get shelter, sometimes your best option is just going to be to go ahead and carve out a large boulder or rock, whatever you want to call it, and hide inside of it. If you do this right, you can actually get rid of the debuff that you would normally get from storms. I've had to use this a few times and it was extremely useful, so I highly recommend you give it a shot. Now our final tip for you today is one that you can use pretty much no matter what mission you're doing, even if you were in your outpost, and that's that it takes longer to regenerate your stamina if you wait for it to deplete entirely. So let me just clarify what I mean here. Let's say you're running and you let your stamina go all the way to the point where it says stamina depleted in blinking red letters. If that happens, you're going to have to wait about four to five seconds for the stamina to start regenerating. Now if you don't do that and you stop right before it gets to the end, it only takes a second or two. This may not seem like a big deal, but trust me, this adds up when you're doing long distance runs. That could save you 20, 30, 40, even a minute or two if you're doing a long enough distance run. I know on our longest trip, I probably depleted my stamina bar at least 20 times. And if you think that's two to three seconds each time I depleted it, that's two to three seconds times 20 that I could save, which comes out to about a minute. And again, I know it doesn't seem like a big deal, but if you're doing this throughout the entire mission, it will save you so much time, so I highly recommend you guys start using it. And if you didn't get all that, the simple answer is don't let your stamina completely deplete, let it get as close to it as you can, and then stop sprinting and let it start to regenerate. With all that being said, I am Game Advisor. I hope you enjoyed this Icarus Tips video, and if you want to see more videos like it, subscribe to our channel or just go watch some of them. We've got tons of tips videos out on Icarus already. We cover tons of other survival games. Again, thank you so much for watching. I'm Game Advisor, and I'll see you next time.